The idea that corporations are lying about being green, that's not new. That's been going on since the start of the environmental movement in the 1960s, so not new. But as we've come out the other end of the global pandemic, what myself and my professional colleagues have noticed is that greenwashing, the practice of greenwashing, has been ramped up on steroids. And at its core, greenwashing is essentially just lying, right? It's blanketing themselves in this notion that they're good for the earth, good for the earth's people, but in reality, they might not be as altruistic when you look behind the scenes. So, green speak is the first way that they do that. And they use semiotics. Semiotics is a fancy marketing word for the use of symbols and colors to portray meaning. You see it on a box that's green. You see it on, I don't know, pictures that have like daisies or a pastoral scene, right? This all evoke a certain meaning to you. You see it in collateral, you see it in ad copy. All the marketing that's behind this basically showing that, oh look, we're sustainable, trust us. When they might be, but they also might not be. So that's way number one. Way number two is misdirection. And that's exactly what these corporations are doing. They're saying, don't look over here, look over here. Look at this cute picture of kids on the cover of our sustainability report. Don't look at the child labor in Bangladesh. Or look at all these numbers that we're giving you because we're so transparent, but don't actually look too deep because you might find what we don't want you to. So misdirection. But that doesn't mean that you can't trust all companies. That's not at all what I'm saying. It depends really what industry they're in and what sector they're in. And when we think about corporations in general, we think about industry, we think, oh my god, there's like hundreds, right? Not really. There's like 20 industries in the world. That's kind of it. So you break them down. On one end of the scale, there are the really bad ones, the ones that call the unsustainable, sort of the lost causes. We know who they are. Oil and gas, coal, mining, defense, and tobacco. That's kind of it. Lost causes, you know, leave them alone. No matter what they do, no matter what they say, they're never going to be sustainable until they put themselves out of business. That's that. The other end of the scale, you have those that maybe they're not perfect, but they're much better than most. So they tend to be in highly regulated industries like healthcare, pharmaceutical, med tech. So these sort of companies, not, again, not perfect, but better than most. They tend not to greenwash as much, and they also tend to be a little bit more sustainable. Curiously, Finance also sits within that sector. And I know there's some people from NABIC here, so uh, <laughs> they're not to be harmed. So those are the two extremes. All the other industries, the other 15-ish, are sort of sitting in the middle. So some are doing really, really good, some are not so good, but varying degrees of success. And at this stage, it's also important to remember that not all greenwashing is the same. There's some greenwashing that is accidental. We can kind of, it's not to give them a pass, but you know, if it's accidental, if it's maybe a new company that's just started on their sustainability journey. They fudge a number here, say the wrong thing there, that's fine, we can work with that, we can fix that. But there's the other companies that greenwashing is built into their marketing mix, and those are the ones we really need to watch out for and concern ourselves with. That's the corporate world. That's where I thought I was going to stop with the book. I thought it was just going to be that, going to be a small little book. This is not a small book. Because once I started doing more research and peeling back the layers, I realized, oh my god, it's not just them. It's governments and it's influencers as well. So then I needed to keep writing, so. There's also sort of these hyper-national organizations that play in the book. I'm thinking of especially those in the sporting arena. So FIFA is a great example, especially with the most recent World Cup in Qatar and all of the human rights abuses and ethics issues there. You also have groups like the IOC and the damage that happens to any host city of the Olympics, both environmentally and economically. But, you know, yesterday was the state of origin. Who sponsors the state of origin? Ample. So what they do, what these organizations do, it's not just for marketing. It's for what we call a social license to operate. And what that means is basically an organization will go in, they'll plaster their name on something that as a community we care about. We care about sports, we love sports. So you look at Ample sponsoring sports and you go, oh, they, they really do care about us. Let's not worry too much about the other bad stuff that they're doing. So that's kind of the, the state sponsored free launch. It's celebrities. You know, as much as I hate them, the Kardashians gave me a lot of material for the book. Especially, you know, when they take their planes to go get a $20 Haley Bieber smoothie from Erewhon. It's out of control how much pollution they create. One of my favorite examples, and I don't know how the stars align for this, but in 2020 during the awards season, all the awards decided that green was the theme. So you had the Academy Awards and the BAFTAs encouraging attendees to wear sustainable clothing. And as a response, Joaquin Phoenix wore the same tuxedo, wait, the same tuxedo, three whole times. Which prompted Stella McCartney to call him a climate hero. It's like, well, what won't these people do to save the world, right? So it's celebrities as well. 
but it's also the ultra wealthy. It's the 0.001% of humanity. It's the people that go to Davos that you know are actually the most polluting segment of humanity, but want to tell us, all the little peons, what to do and how to save the world. They're also greenwashing. And another influencer, probably the most important influencer of all, ourselves. So I do take a look in the book to point the mirror back on ourselves to see, is there more than we can do to save the planet? And I'm not saying that we're lying and calling ourselves sustainable when we're not, but if you are, stop it. But really, is what we're doing in one way having the biggest bang for the buck? Is your recycling program as good as maybe going and volunteering at, I don't know, a local community organization? Who knows? But it really is up to you to decide because at the end of the day, you're the one that influences the things that you